So when I first met Jonathan, I had just gotten out of rehab. So I had been sober only maybe like a few weeks when we had our first like encounter on Instagram, then via email, then via text and phone calls. I was working bottle service. I didn't have a actual place to live. So I ended up, shout out to my girlfriend D um, for letting me move in with her. And I was sharing a bed with her when I met Jonathan. So not a big catch. I had been out of a hole for about a year and a bit. So I had actually gone through really, really, really rough that's stuff. A, that's, we'll get into that one day because that is an incredible story. I had essentially lost every single thing in my life, was sleeping in a car, showering at a 24 hour fitness, and was like, I'm either going to blow my brains out, become a drug addict or an alcoholic, or I need to find another addiction. That addiction ended up, actually ended up being fitness because at least I had the wherewithal to be like, if I'm going to like destroy my body and put it through pain, I'm gonna do it in a way that at least it will benefit me. Plus you had gained a ton of weight, so you were fat. And you needed a, well that is I mean, a big point. I'm just telling the story here. No, I know, but we'll get into that yes. too, but that's a huge thing. Like you, you got depressed, you were at a low point, you were going through was, like a by, bad breakup. By, by every single metric known to man, I was an absolute loser. But a year before meeting Natalie, that had completely changed. I became a completely different man, a man that I was proud of. My work ethic, I was like, no one's gonna outwork me, and ever. And that's when you were ready to meet was, somebody. And I was ready to meet someone. I had worked on myself to be at the place for when I met the right person. I was like, I'm good, I'm dope, I'm good. Like, I'm a catch. I just didn't have two pennies to rub together. I was broke as a joke. Yeah. So that's where we were in our single lives when we met. Jonathan was getting himself out of his very low point and I was slowly trying to uh, come up from underwater. Yeah. So should we go into the story of how we met? That is a story for the ages. I saw her page. I liked Instagram, Instagram page. And this is before DMs, all of it. I saw it somehow, thought she was very, very, very beautiful, of course. But at the time, I was single, so beautiful girls in Orange County were single everywhere. Single and broke. Let's not leave that out. Back to the story that we were talking before, yeah. you so rudely interrupted. Sorry. So gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous girl. But what stood out was I saw she had posted, A, her at church. If I see a girl is going to church, automatically I'm like very interested. Then she was posting a book. It was about the five languages of love. Five love languages. Which now is a super trendy book. Like everyone knows about, oh, what's your love language? But 10 years ago, that was like the cutting edge stuff. And I had actually just read that book and thought it was really, really cool that not only is this girl going to church, but she's also reading to like better herself. And then obviously I saw that she worked out. At that time, because I believe I just started Instagram, I didn't have really any like crazy You had no followers. Yeah, no following and no <laughs> thirst traps. I don't know what. It's not a, I mean, okay, he wants to bring up following. Well, I mean, that is that is something. That's true at the time. No, now it's like you're world famous. No, like, no, what no. Are you no. gonna you're gonna begrudge me my twenty six thousand well, followers back when you had four? You had actually twenty five k. I okay. remember it well, specifically because I had maybe a thousand or twelve hundred, and I remember after he had liked a couple photos and they weren't anything in like a bikini or anything like that. He was like church book. I remember seeing this person that I didn't recognize or know, and I'm like, who is this? And I remember clicking on his profile and being like, wait a minute. Obviously he looked great because his whole entire page was like super heavy fitness, like CrossFit to the T. And uh, he had 25,000 followers and I was like, holy shit. Like that's a lot. Actually, that was a lot back then. Now it's like yeah, funny. It's but back then, I was like, I don't know. And this was pre-DMs, pre-Instagram um, even being offered on Android. So it was only offered on iPhones. And we had to communicate in the comments where it's like, hey, here's my email. Please delete this. Got it. Delete it. My email to her, 12713. That's 10 years ago. If it's easier for you and you aren't a serial murderer using some pretty girl's pictures, you can text me. I give my phone number. That's it. Then... Pretty soon, like the same day basically, my phone got wiped. I got your text literally as my phone crashed. So I pretty much blame you for me losing every single one of my contacts. Ha ha ha. Please send me your number again and we can figure out a date to crossfit it up. Natalie's response to, to uh, my phone getting wiped. Hold on, where is it? 
Basically, guys, I just saw some chick email bringing back old memories. I was well, trying to fucking be crazy and holler at my man when she showed me. <laughs> Natalie responds with, oh my god, are you serious? What happened? Ha ha ha. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My number is... Wait a minute. For everybody, for you guys, take note. What you send via text or email lives literally forever. This is a decade ago. Do you want to go with telling So story? our first time meeting was probably one of the most embarrassing things for me that's ever happened in my entire life. I have always been very, very good with women. I've grown up around them, had a lot of friends that were women. I love women and get along with them very, very well. However, the irony is the first time I met my wife, I literally came across as, I would say, an autistic serial killer. Would, see, would be my first impression. Yeah, I was very much. So I tell Jonathan I'm going to go in um, and take my first class. And he is like, oh, and he was working on a game, a game launch. Diablo. So, um, at that time at Blizzard, like that's when their guys are working like overtime like crazy. Diablo 3 was launching in like eight days. I'm talking we were living at Blizzard. It was a big deal. So he finds out that I'm taking like a 7 p.m. class and he ends up uh all of a sudden texting me and he's like oh hey you but know we I got off don't even worry you know we got off early yeah. i think i think maybe i'll come and swing by like trying to play it cool like first of all i was managing a team so i had to like pretend that i was sick get someone to cover for me so i could come out and meet this girl so i walk into occf and I, I see, I can see, you know when you walk in somewhere and you can see the person already like out of the corner of your eye, but I see him like going up for a muscle up and like basically, you didn't fall, but- No, no, what happened is I'm doing, like I'm, I'm, that is my spot. I'm killing it. My friends are there, my buddy Ryan. Like this is, this is my spot she's in. I'm doing muscle ups and then I glance, I see her walk in and it's like one of those, you know those movies where everything just goes like slow motion, like and I literally almost knocked my front teeth out doing a muscle up. And I saw this, but I did one of those things where like I didn't want him to see that I saw, so and, I just kind of like... And then I see that she is now embarrassed for me, right? So I've made such a fool of myself that she is being polite, kind-hearted, and not letting me see that she saw it to try to like lessen my embarrassment. Yeah. And you would think that would be okay with an embarrassing situation. Everything smooths out from there. Oh no, it gets worse, much, much worse. Yeah, I continued. His conversation walking me to my class was like... I was like, I met, I met her. My name is it's so bad. Like I saw her, I'm like, hi. And she's like, hello. It's good that you signed up for class. It like, was so it was, weird. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I mean, I'm sure some of you guys have had this experience where you're blowing it and you know you're blowing it and you're literally like yelling at yourself in your head being like, what is wrong with you? Get it together and speak English, you nutcase. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So I go to my class, he ends up going to his. I'm like fall in love with it. I'm, I remember like killing it in my class. So now my class ends, right? <laughs> and her class has like eight minutes left and it's in a different part of like the gym. So I'm like, okay, I'm thinking that everything is like timed where she's gonna be wrapping up in the next 30 seconds. So I'll walk over while she's done. I'll give her like a water bottle. We'll talk about the workout. Things will be normal. I get over there. First of all, it's like four people. Mm -hmm. They're all dying. She's killing it. And there's no one else around me. Everyone else has left. So now I'm standing there <laughs> just looking like watching them just work out. And so I'm like, oh my God, this is so weird. I'm going to like come over to stare at her working out for the next like five minutes. So then I'm pretending like uh, I don't have my cell phone. So now I'm pretending like I'm He's just like looking down. busying myself like mm, maybe my shoes are interesting or oh, this wall over here, man, could you? It was so embarrassing that as I'm doing it, I'm like, oh my God, dude, she's going to quite literally call the police on you. Like, I didn't think it was that weird. I didn't mind because I thought it was kind of like funny and cute because I could tell that he was trying super not nervous to stare. And super nervous. She had me so nervous it was ridiculous. He just continued to be weird and awkward on the way out as soon as it was over and then walked me to my car super odd and I was like, okay, bye. And I walked her to her car and in my head I'm like, dude, you are blowing it. You're blowing it. She got in the car and drove away and I was like, you are never going to see this girl again. So I just like, I'm like get it together. Got the phone, called her immediately. It was like, you know what? We've both had a pretty like serious workout. 
you have a long drive, let's go grab, there's like a little organic juice bar. Let's at least get some juice, get some good sugars in us, some good carbs, that way we can kind of like, you know, mellow out and you can drive back. I don't want you getting like, you know, jittery on the road because sometimes the crossfit workout can hit you later. And she's like, cool. We went to Mother's Market, sat at the juice bar, started talking. That juice did wonders for me. It was like Popeye with his spinach. Yeah. I became me again. And then that was a wrap. Yep. Then yep. we were never not together after that. Yeah. And that was it. And then I left, went back to LA. He sent me a text and just said, just so you know, I'm going to mess up your uh, social life and um, you're going to marry me. And I was like, psycho. And yeah. Then, and, five, I am. and five weeks later, she got engaged. First date, um, I remember going to Jonathan's place and not knowing what to expect because this is like now like a real date, not just you My know, lemon grabbing, cookie dinner. Yeah, not just grabbing um, a juice. I didn't know at the time that he was cooking me dinner because he couldn't afford to take me out to dinner. That was, it was a big problem. I was like, well, I want to take her out on a date, but I'm like broke as a joke. So I'll make her like a bomb, like I'll cook her a bomb dinner. But what he didn't know is that my love language is food. <laughs> so it actually worked out real so well. So him me. cooking me, I mean, to this day, I get excited if he makes me something to eat. And I am a really good cook. I'm not going to lie about yeah, that. Yeah, he is. He is really good. I'm like good. a really, really good cook. So our first date, um, I remember just being like super nervous and not knowing what to really expect. Well, I remember too. So I was obviously trying to like figure out what to cook. I know she's health conscious and the whole deal. So like, and I don't drink and I didn't know that she was an alcoholic and didn't drink either. So I remember getting like salmon and like asparagus and like really like good pairings for that. And then being like, shit, like. I guess grown-ups drink wine with dinner. So like what wine and asking the person at a, it was probably Costco to be honest, yeah. what's a good white wine? And then, you know, pouring some for her, pouring some for me. And I was like, oh, here, would you like some wine? And she's like, no, no, thank you. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. She doesn't drink either. That's like dope. Cause I didn't want to drink this wine either. I was trying to be polite. Yeah. And then, okay. So that was dinner. Dinner was great. And then I'm like, you know what? Let's binge watch like Spartacus because that was like kind of out at the time. And uh, I'm like, this seems like a cool thing to like watch with uh, someone you're just going on a date with. And she had never had Ben and Jerry's. So I bought like six pints of Ben and Jerry's, fish food, Cherries Garcia. Food shit. And she had never had Ben and Jerry's before. So I was like, oh dude, I'm already like, she's gonna love this. And then I throw a Spartacus on. And like, Spart when you're watching Spartacus as a guy by yourself single, it's like, wow, this is like super violent and sexual, but like you're a guy, so it just kind of goes over your head. <laughs> when you're watching it with a girl who you're on a first date with, you're like, oh no, what did I just put on? She's gonna think I'm some kind of like total like crazy person. It's like violent pornography would probably be the best way to describe it. And I'm like, this is what I picked to put on for the first thing we watched together on the I couch. I don't remember, how did we end? Because I, I know that I did not spend the night for like a long time. No, you were super. So that's one thing I will say about that. Like she was very, very, very different than girls I had dated previously. And even when I did spend the night, nothing happened. Yeah, no, no. She definitely did not have sex with me. And I remember even the first time, I mean, we had hung out maybe like four or five times. And I remember I like went in to kiss her and she was like, what are you doing? Like it wasn't, it wasn't like a, oh no, like some nonsense like that. It was really like, she was like, yo, we've... Ah, ah. Yeah, I was like, we've hung out like five times. Like, what do you think you're even trying yeah. to do? So that was very attractive as well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how we left that, that um, first date, but I know that I went back Well, you home. came back for more food. <laughs> you're like, this is where I don't got to go out to eat anymore. This yeah. is great. And I remember at one time she spent the night and I made her like banana pancakes oh, yeah, at like 2.30 in the morning. And I had like 20. Dude, I, I literally couldn't even believe, I wish that I had like a, a camera. I did a, like a Bisquick box thinking like, oh, I'll have a bunch of batter for the morning. My roommate will have it for like the next week. This broad ate quite literally a box of Bisquick and a dozen bananas. So she ate a box of Bisquick and a dozen bananas and a half a jar of like the all That's natural maple syrup. Do. He's the one. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen a woman put away food like this in my life. They were excellent. They were very good. So that's kind of where it started in the sense of our first date and then it never really like looked back. It never ended. After that, we just were together always. Mm -hmm. We've never been apart. When I first met Jonathan, I was working um, 
totally kind of like that typical LA lifestyle that you hear all the time. So I was doing nightlife bottle service girl because obviously I wanted to do my auditions and work during the day. So that's kind of like where we were in the sense that Jonathan was trying to build up into corporate Business. world, into Blizzard. He has his MBA. Um, and I was just doing the see where life could take me because I had just gotten a call back from WWE and I told him about my WWE. He said, um, is this something you really want to do? I said, yes. And he said, if you weren't seeing me and you did get this job, would you move to Florida? Because at the time their developmental center was in Tampa. And I said, yes. And then he said, all right, we're all in. So I just went in on an open audition. Like I've said a million times in anything, if you guys heard this story, before I apologize but for anybody brand new um, it's one of those things God put me in the right place at the right time when I walked out of that audition I was just like I motherfucking nailed this so from there Jonathan and I had been dating maybe like five six weeks yeah uh, I call him tell him like I just killed this and if I do get it like my life's about to change and within 48 72 hours we hop in a car because we're both from Northern California we got like some clothes we shop at um, AM PM and got like <laughs> coffees, those coffees. Those big, like these coffees uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah and then drove to the Bay Area to see my parents because Jonathan not only did he meet my parents in the the for, for the first time, but he also asked my dad for my hand in marriage that's the where first the, time I ever met him my family really loved Jonathan and my mom is the La Jefa. So she already knew everything about Jonathan before we even got to the house. So I had set the table well. So not only did Jonathan meet my family. For if the you family, want to win over the Nelson household, win over Josie. That's where I do believe, you know, like God puts you in the right place at the right time, but you have to be willing to go with it. You have to realize your opportunities and don't be scared to and go And don't the play door. games. That's the one thing that I would say. Like I did not play a game, one game with her at all. Piggybacking on him saying like playing games and things of that nature. I had just gotten out of rehab, so I never told the truth because obviously when you meet somebody for the first time saying, hi, nice to meet you. I'm really cool, but I just got out of rehab. Immediately it's like head case, mess, red flag, run, 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 run. Or at least that's what I would think. We had gone out to Vegas for his best friend's bachelor combination, bachelor, bachelorette party. And I had been maybe out of rehab like three weeks or something like that. And I relapsed in front of him, which at the time I thought it was like the end of my life. But uh, it was the best thing that could have happened because that's where like the jig was up in the sense of Jonathan said, if you want this to work out, you're clearly an alcoholic and you need to start working your 12 step program or else we're done. Yeah. We love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. And hopefully you enjoyed just a little bit of how we met. This guy and I met. Online. Instagram. Shout out to you, Instagram. Yeah. All right, girl, for a sponsorship. <laughs> Bye, y'all.